I'm Sujay Murthy here. I'm, I'm the TAP for, for Cisco. Uh, I'm, I work with Vishaka, Deepak, Krishnan, and everyone in the team. So why transport slicing is, is so important for customers? Like, what is, what is transport slicing? So when we look at the use cases where uh, the mobile networks or your end-to-end -end solutions want to cater to, they really cater to between an end-to-end -end topology or a solution. Like, give me a path that is you know, a low latency link. That, that three GPP standards and ITF have defined what transport slicing needs are for, for various organizations. And I'll, I'll cover about where those use cases fit for various customers. So the typical slices that, that users look for is whether EMBB slice, which is an enhanced mobile broadband network, which is, again, okay, use the transport network path, but you know, on the left and right, either there are mobile networks or going towards the data center. But transport slicing is so important because it has so much of depth in the breadth of the technology, it really becomes difficult for someone to traverse through the network. So if your mobile teams are looking at the mobile uh, side of networks, I mean, they do want to integrate with transport, and that's where you want to have some sort of handoff. Oh, you understand, like, this is the transport requirements that the mobile needs, and, and it's adhering to those SLA and requirements. So ultra-low latency, uh, reliable, or you are LLC that is ultra reliable low latency communication, which is okay. Give me the path that is using minimum latency, or even on the bandwidth. Like I want a path which uses bandwidth for a specific amount of speeds or, or network speed. So that's requirements that is coming from the slicing field, like the end-to-end -end slicing, mobile network slicing, and transport slicing is so important for that. And what crosswalk network controller is bringing is are all these silo tools coming together. So. What the spectrum of use cases that we see are in, in advanced healthcare or with, with remote education, like during the pandemic that we saw, a lot of remote work and, and, and schools going remote. Industrial automation, like this is really key because you have your MMTCs or um, your um, uh, digital car experience. Everybody needs some sort of reliable connection towards your, your transport, like whether it's from mobile radios towards your, your data center sites. Uh, immersive entertainment, right? Like gaming solutions, like they have specific requirements for a specific period amount of time, and that's where transport slicing becomes so critical. And and what we want to bring all this is, this will bring your your slice creation as an abstraction to say, okay, give me a catalog, show me what are the list of catalog that I can build, like a catalog with VPN plus QoS plus SRTE plus assurance, and then the operator can pick for which industry that the particular type of catalog is relevant for the slicing service. So that's, that's where this is what we term as, as the NSST terminologies that 3GPP defines, but which is a network subnet slice template, but which is basically a catalog for, for your use cases. Okay. Can yeah. I, can I try to go ahead? Sure. So yeah, I I'm, I'm, don't work in service provider space. And I just want to make sure I understand. Network slicing is essentially carving up available bandwidth, being able to dedicate, like dedicate circuit, to to a to a end user without impacting anyone else across the same bandwidth is that correct? Is my assumption what network slicing is, or am I getting that wrong? No, that's that's right. That's that's exactly right. Within the same transport network, how we would you carve out your your slices for, for a specific type of service meeting those SLA requirements? Can I can I try to maybe take a stab on it? Sure. Uh, maybe I'm oversimplifying this, sir. But then what you're trying to do is applying this income set of constrained path forwarding and all this you see things that SRV6 or, or SR regularly, even in RSPPT, it doesn't matter. But you're doing it at a micro level because what happens here is that it doesn't apply for all the traffic or for some particular traffic. You would rather just scale it vertically or virtualize it vertically if you want to put it that way. And then as if you would have, then, okay, so this is my link. So it's all about as it the one queue tags. Again, I'm oversimplifying it, but then for instance, VLAN 1 will be automotive and they have these requirements. VLAN 2 is going to be regular use. VLAN 3 is going to be internet access. And then what you would do is, is then assign into this particular, well, you would make some sort of affinity and then they would have a template of particular requirements to meet and then, okay, I'm just going to drop you here. So it's just abstracting a little higher so you can add another level of classification and then meet requirements for different industries, but it's going to be over the same physical path. That's all about it, right? 
right? Okay, you're just abstracting, abstracting and, and it, yeah. I adding another layer to the lasagna yeah. there, right? Okay, good. Yeah, and, and what you explained, right? It makes sense. Like you you touched base upon so many network elements in the in the network service, right? But when it went from an operational perspective for a transport slice network and the mobile radios are saying like, okay, give me a path that will take this slice or yeah. you know the the red slice or the blue slices. I mean, the transport has to be ready for that. Okay, this is the slice that that the mobile needs to hand over. And, and I'll show you in the demo is we do define that through some tags. Like how will you hand it over to, to the radios to say, okay, they rely on certain S NSSEI IDs and what is the path that they can use to forward their, tra their network so for, uh, transport? So to implement this, because you would have SR, SRV6 and L2VPNs, L3VPNs in, in the earlier, again, the not legacy, but uh, the MPLS flavor of it. Yeah. Then you would have to support uh, maybe seed binding. When, yeah. when the label stack is too big, then there's a point in which you do a binding because you cannot simply add more stacks on top of it. So you have to have, had, uh, I don't know, the, the, the bindings, you would have to have a specific ERO as well. So all that stuff is supposed to be then supported so you can then patch all the generations of SP technologies and deliver the same thing, right? Or is it going to be just SR, SRV6 and the other things will have to be migrated over before we do anything? Yeah, so currently it is VPN, um, layer 2 VPN or layer 3 VPN plus uh, mm -hmm. SR, SRV6. Okay. Um, and the QoS that we are binding are reusing the QoS in the network that you already have it existing. So between your uh, outward facing through P to C side links, what is the QoS policies that you want to apply would be reused from the network. It's, it's just reusing the same, the same terms that were well known. It's just in, in another layer right on top of it. But, yeah. Okay. And that's why it becomes so cumbersome, right? Like, yes. When you say like the different mobile radios have different types, I mean, you have so much of combinations going on, you really don't know what's happening. And, and that's why this, this solution and the challenges is how do you automate or simplify the slice lifestyle functions or you know, ensure that a specific SLA defined for the slicing is adhered to the, to the slice solution. And we do rely on all these underlying technology components. So um, let me just skip to this and come back to here. Right. So this is where we look at Two different slice types. One is we say, what is a dedicated slice? Between your radios, you say you want to have the blue path, which is taking the ultra reliable low latency communication or the EMBB links, which is like, okay, the blue sites will talk only to blue and the green sites will talk only to the green. Mm -hmm. But what we've also enhanced and experienced is, like there are use cases that customers have seen or we have seen for transporters. I have an infrastructure network of a slice, like let's say it's called as a gold slice, and I have the blue and the, the green slices that I provision with different SLAs. I want them to be connected as I require them to talk to the other radio. So like blue can talk to gold slice, but I want to stitch them when I feel the need for it. Or I want the green to stitch to gold slices when my radios on the other side want to connect to the infrastructure network of slice. So it's, it's also stitching between two different slice types, but how you could ensure that yeah, your, your slices are there and you could connect between two different slices for the network. And, and that's what, if the mobile wants to connect for, like for a certain experience in, in gaming, if there's a, an increase in, 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 in throughput or requirements, you could then stitch through your other slices and say that, okay, uh, you could still get your requirements. Once it is done, you could disengage or unstitch the slice. So you effectively are treating each one of these slices as if would be akin to a VPN. And then this concept will be exactly the same as doing an extranet. It's just that it will be on demand, it needs requirements, and then it will be the stitch. stitch. That's it. Okay, good. This is uh, the ITF network model. Right? The ITF slice has defined a, a network model uh, for slicing that says what are the components that should go in a, in a template? Like what is the SLO template that, that you want to define? So you say what is a Yang model for a template for layer three QoS, layer two QoS, catalog of QoS policies, and then defined through your forwarding plane policies. Now the forwarding plane policies here are more about ODN templates, uh, but how you could reuse ODN templates as is or, or as a blueprint. And, and the slicing definition is basically creating those slices out of those catalog. Is use the forwarding template, use the QoS assurance capabilities in the catalog and bind it to your SDPs. So, um, let me quickly switch back to the screen here. So this is uh, the current work in progress uh, version of, of CNC that we are showcasing. What we have here are a bunch of um, slice templates that you could define. So here, if you could see that 
you have QoS tests because let's say you want to run a QoS policy across devices. You could just bring up a QoS service. Or you want to use URLLC type service with assurance, um, with basic monitoring or advanced assurance for service. And the really interesting part is on the right-hand side here is to use a policy whether as is or as a blueprint. Because we are using from the network the Odeon templates that are created, but if you have per slice bandwidth requirements, you could use the same properties of affinity uh, links or, or the set list mm -hmm. that's on the Odeon, but you could customize that to add a bandwidth to it because so that you would create a new Odeon template with your bandwidth requirements and reuse the same properties of the uh, Odeon mm -hmm. template. There so, Current version is version four, correct? Right. This comes out in April. Will that be a version five? Five. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. This feels this feels like what Viptela was doing with the with the address families when using OMP. So what they were doing, they were slapping then uh, additional attributes on top of the prefixes. So then you can use the attribute to reclassify what you were doing. So you're essentially. I know it's again roughly oversimplifying everything, and I apologize, but what you're doing here is just slapping another tag on top of it so it can then be differentiated with another particular set of data attributes, and, and then you just build the universe on top of that as long as the MTU allows you to, and the stack, label stack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I would say yes, yes for, for, for the label stack and the underlying MPLS uh, technology that is being used, right? But then what, what, might need customization is by various QoS policies that get uh, addressed to your ingress and egress side mm -hmm. of fees. I mean, well, you might be using the same Odeon policy, same Odeon templates, or, or the same underlying MPLS, okay. but it's it's a different uh, QoS policy. Um, I think because we are provisioning the new VPN services, what mm -hmm. we're saying is like when you create a slice, you don't have to worry about what is a VPN, what is the underlying segment routing mm -hmm. policies and all. You just define that through your catalog and, and re keep provisioning multiple slices. Yeah, the big gotcha here is which QoS policy you will be applying because yeah. each one of the QoS policies is going to drive whatever is the requirement, requirement you need for this slice of transport. Yes. So you're just mapping them particular QoS policies to these slice transport, transport and then, well, then <clears throat> that's a moment when you use this tag in which you allow them to be classified this way. So then if you see this QoS policy because it belongs to this tag and you get back to the VPN you want to deploy. Yes. So, okay, good. So it's an over, over, over later, right? <laughs> Turtles all the way down, man. <laughs> you can always add another level of indirection. Ah, there it is. I'm so, but let me show you here, like, what you could see, for example, um, let's see a, a fourth slice, right? Where I'm creating a slice between two endpoints and this is the new view that I can drill down to a slice service, right? Look at what are my shared slices that are connected as part of the service. Um, so this is an upper slice, but on this view, I can click on, okay, what is the other shared slice this, that it is binding? Really open software use cases, like having a particular service shared by all slices, yeah. and it's determined by a specific QoS policy as well. Assume you have not the typical shared services like DNS or other things. Assume you have, I don't know, some caching service for some reason, and it's multi-tenancy, and then you have several customers making use of it for some reason, or a proxy or anything similar, then you can then attach a QoS policy to that slice, and yeah. then everybody's gonna externet to that one, at least on demand, and then it's gonna disappear. Yes. So then it allows you then to assign and release, release resources. Yes, okay, awesome. Um, so the slice view, then, then the VPN view, it's basically, you know, what the shared slice and the dedicated slice are importing and exporting those RTs, right? Between them, you could visualize uh, the same VPN service, and then on VPN service, expanding this to assurance, like what um, Christian covered. So you get all this to say, okay, whether it's meeting your SLA, it's not meeting your SLA um, on the service, and on the transport slice, finally, is to look at what are the transport network, uh, the traffic engineering paths that are assigned to the service. So it's even, let's say on, um, this is the, the the, the quickly I want to show a demo is how, what you could see as, as an EMBB slice template. I mean, um, you look at all the traffic engineering tunnels that is provisioned here in the network, which is using color 100. I can go ahead and change the slice to use uh, uh, a different template. It's 
Like instead of EMBB, I can see the list of all the slices, bring in URL, I'll see, do a next, next, and, and, and I commit the changes. So this is basically, okay, tearing down those ODN tunnels, bringing up the new ODN with those characteristics, if there is new QoS applied, apply those new QoS to the interfaces. All that is orchestrated through the, through NSO, through this Yang service model, mm -hmm. and, and the overall intent is defined as part of your, your service. Mm -hmm. So it's as simple to say what, type of service uh, need, which type of SLAs, and, and what catalogs would be uh, applied to the service. So in this, you would see like now the, the transport engineering path has changed to, to color 110, and, uh, and it will be like new different paths that, that will be visualized as part of the service. So the same characteristics, same building blocks, but build this together um, with an SLO template and catalog. So the mobile networks could, could reuse uh, for your I transport on the slides. Yet another degree of abstraction on top of what we had, so you can achieve this. So in terms of label stack and these type of limitations, then how far can you go? Because you have a binding seed and this type of stuff, fine. But then how, how much of that can you add on top of what you already handle? Because I, there will be a limit with SR and MPLS, SR and this type of stuff. In SRV6, it's another story because it's massive. But with SR, then how far can you get? Uh, I think that purely limits to the to the limitation on what the platform or the device has to offer or support. I mean, the orchestration will either, like after it can provision, it may fail on where it's not able to compute all the mm -hmm. paths, and then you may see that, okay, the service is not provisioned, or it's provisioned, mm -hmm. but it's not functioning as as Okay, intended. then can I ask another one? Thought of that we have to be done with this part of the project. Okay, so in uh, just for for the sake of another question, then I, I assume you're doing this in LR. So then, how many hops are you driving all this uh, Uber simplification to, to achieve this uh, in a network? So how big is the network then you are modeling so that you can test that the functionalities can go across? Assume twenty five hops in an MPLS network. Which is not unheard of. If you're in Asia, that's that's a very nice number. Actually, it's decent. But <laughs> then, how many hubs can this go get along or get across? And is it purely SRV6? And because there will be some gotcha, especially on the scale and how far you can get with this particular policy. Uh, so, what you're asking the question is how like how does the platform? Yeah, it, lab validation. I assume it's in lab validation because I I wouldn't think that a provider would just implement the right on the spot, but in lab validation, then how far are you guys getting for? Well, so we're still, still testing this. Okay. And uh, the end-to-end, -end, uh, you know, it'll be a splicing of binding set-based uh, segments. I but, can't uh, imagine that. <laughs> side, we are still, you know, working in, uh, mm -hmm. in I guess, in, in conjunction with the uh, XR teams. Mm -hmm. And we'll bring that, you know, whatever the come up, with yeah. that solution will be automated across board. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I put it that way. Yeah. Uh, at this point, uh, from from the scope of what we are trying to do, we are you know we are going with uh, uh, if the MSD for a particular platform is eight or seven or ten or fifteen, you know mm -hmm. we are trying to stay within that um, because then the uh, let's say hierarchical SR policy kind of thing would be right. needed to. To span, yeah. So that's something we're definitely looking at, mm -hmm. but it's uh, a little bit beyond cross work. So I would, uh, I would, uh, I, we are, we are working with the XRT. XRT. Yeah, brilliant.